Get those 3D glasses out. We are now going to work with three-dimensional geometry, finding specifically surface area and volume. With this lesson, though, we're going to get some vocabulary out of the way. So our first word to know is polyhedron, and these are types of solid figures that we'll be studying. And there's an example here. Now, a polyhedron is something made up of polygons that we call faces. So in this example, we see at the top of this, there's this square face, and there are others around the sides, these rectangles and trapezoids in the front, all joined together in three dimensions to form the polyhedron. So we put those faces together, and when a face meets another face, it does so along a, a line segment, like right here, and that is what we call an edge. By definition, an edge is the intersection of two faces. You'll remember them as the line segments. And finally, we have the corners, these points where all the faces come together. Those are what we call vertices, or one would be called a vertex. Vertices would be plural. So the definition of a vertex is the intersection of three or more faces. These are the corners of our polyhedron. Look at these examples, and we want to know if these are polyhedron or not. Now remember, the definition of polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure made only of polygons. So any curved surfaces would not be included in our definition. In Part A, we see only polygons, specifically triangles and rectangles, forming this. So this would be a polyhedron. But in example B, there's this curved surface. This is a little sector of a circle. It's got the curved surface most specifically. And that curved surface means it's not a polyhedron. We will still be studying it in this unit, but we need to remember polyhedron are all flat surfaces. So this is a no. Then finally, in this figure, we see a hexagon on the bottom and triangles forming the walls around it. So since those are all just polygons, this is a yes. So just remember that a polyhedron is a solid 3D figure made only of flat surfaces, and you'll be good. Now we also want to go and count the number of faces, edges, and vertices in each one. So let's go back to part A, and let's count how many faces there are. How many different polygons do you see, or surfaces? There's one, two triangles, and then around those triangles we see one, two, three rectangles. So total for faces is five. Now when it comes to edges, and I'm going to just highlight these, I'm seeing three edges that are forming the triangle, one, two, three. Over on the other end, three more edges, that's four, five, and six. And then these connecting edges, seven, eight, and nine. So for edges, let's say nine. Last we see the vertices. How many corners do we have? Well, let's just number them. One, two, there's three. Over here, there's four, five, and six. So with our vertices, we've got six. Now, we're not going to do B here because it's not even a polyhedron. So but let's go to C. How many faces do you see in that? Counting them, I see the, the hexagon at the bottom. That's one. And then around that hexagon, there are six walls of triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Count them until you see them. So six triangles plus the one hexagon means our total of faces is seven. For edges, around the hexagon, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six, of course, six around a hexagon. And then each of those points makes a triangle. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So our edges count is twelve. And last, we have our vertices. Let's number these. So the, around the bottom we have the hexagon. There should be six. One, two, three, four. Back here is five and six. Of course, it's a hexagon. Remember that. So six around the bottom, and then one up here at the corner or at the top makes seven. So our total on the vertices count would be seven. And you need to be able to count those because it helps you test yourself to see if you're seeing the figure right. So you've got to put on your three-dimensional glasses to see these as three-dimensional objects. Now our unit, just as an overview, we're going to be talking about four, actually five, but four of these main ones, different solid figures. We're going to have the prism, and I want you to notice that a prism is made up of two parallel polygons that are congruent to each other, these two pentagons in this picture. Those two parallel polygons, those are called the bases, and a prism always has two congruent bases. 
And then with these connecting walls, these walls are all rectangles or parallelograms in general, and those are what we call the lateral faces. Lateral faces, the word lateral generally means side, so these are like our side walls. The lateral faces are the parallelograms going around the bases. We're going to talk about prisms. We're also going to talk about pyramids, and on a pyramid, you only have one base. In this case, it's the pentagon again. So this is our base. And then from there, these lateral faces, these are triangles along the walls or the sides. Those lateral faces come up and they make a point all together at the top. And that point there is called the vertex. And sometimes, write this down, it's called the apex of the pyramid. Now both prisms and pyramids are named for the shape of their base. In fact, that's something to highlight. We name them for the shape of their bases. So these two examples, since the bases are pentagons, I would call this a pentagonal prism. And over here I would call this a pentagonal pyramid. We'll practice that in just a minute. We're also going to study these two kinds of figures, which are, which are not polyhedron because of their curved shapes. We're going to talk about the cylinder, which has the circular bases. And we're going to talk about the cone, which has a circular base as well. So we're going to practice naming these because every, all the work we do is really going to be based on whether you can identify what the figure is. So as we look at this first one, I want you to notice that there is a trapezoid right here as one of our faces. And that trapezoid has a twin. Right on the front of it is a trapezoid, but in the back there's another trapezoid. In fact, maybe I can even highlight that other trapezoid. That is a second trapezoid that matches the shape of the first one. And because of that, this makes this a prism. And the fact that we have a trapezoid as its base means this is a trapezoidal prism. In this next one, notice that our base is here at the bottom. And what shape is that? Looking at the tick marks, it looks like it's a rectangle to me. And then all the other faces, they rise to a point at the top, that vertex point, rather than going to a different face. So because of that, this is what we call a rectangular, rectangle because of the bottom, get the N in there, rectangular pyramid. Now what do we have in example three? It looks like another pyramid to me. But what do, what do we have on the base here? How many sides do you see on that polygon? We count them up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So this is a hexagon base. We're going to call it a hexagonal pyramid. And finally here, I'm noticing that we have a triangle for our base on this one. And rather than rising up to a single point, the, these edges rise up to a second triangle that matches the one at the bottom. So because this has two bases, it's a prism. And it's got the triangle, so it's a triangular prism. Now let's shift gears a little bit. I want to tell you a little bit about a mathematician called Leonard Euler. And Leonard Euler was a Swiss mathematician who is known as the Mozart of mathematics because he produced a lot of math. In fact, one resource that I read said that in his obituary, it listed 50 pages long of just the things he published. So he really was prolific in coming up with a lot of different math ideas. We still use most of them today. One of them we use is called Euler's formula. And Euler's formula relates the number of faces, vertices, and edges of a polyhedron. And the formula goes like this. If you take the number of vertices and you add to that the number of faces, it's always going to equal the number of edges plus 2. Let's go back to your first example and let's show that that's true with the ones we counted there. So Euler's formula is that the number of faces plus the number of vertices always equals the number of edges plus 2. Faces plus vertices is edges plus 2. Let's just verify again that this works in these examples. So in this first example we had 5 faces and we're going to add 5 faces to six vertices. So we have faces plus vertices equals edges, which is 9, and then the formula says plus 2. And let's just see if that's true. 5 plus 6 is 11, and what do you know? 9 plus 2 is 11. So it does work for that example. 
Part B here wasn't even a polyhedron, so we aren't going to go with that one. But in part C, let's test the formula out here. Does faces plus vertices equal edges plus 2? Well, we counted 7 faces, and let's add 7 vertices. Does that equal 12 edges plus 2? Of course, 14 equals 14 on both sides. So it works for this one. And it works for all of our convex polyhedron. It's going to be a nice formula to know, and it's definitely helpful as you work with chemistry, specifically molecular chemistry. They use that a lot. And the last thing we're going to talk about is what's known as a cross-section. I've got several examples here. When you are studying three-dimensional solid, it's very often helpful to know what it looks like in a two-dimensional way. And so we do this cross-section idea, which is simply to take your solid, like this pear here, and slice through it with a knife, and you get this this shape right here. So this is a cross section of a pair. It looks like this kind of curvy shape right here. This would be called the cross section. Cross section of an onion would be a very thin slice of an onion and what it looks like in that shape. Look at this cross section of a carrot right here. It's this oval type of shape that we get. So basically your definition, a cross section is a two-dimensional, remember it's going to be flat, a two-dimensional figure that's formed by the intersection of a plane with a solid. So a plane is going to act like a knife slicing through some solid figure and we're going to look at what the cross section formed is. Here's a simple cube and we've sliced through it and we want to simply describe what the shape is on the two-dimensional level. So this here, this would be a square. If we slice through a cube and open it up, we're going to see a square, a square on the surface. Now, if we take the same cube and we slice it along a corner, instead, we don't get a square this time. What we get is this, this little surface right here, or a triangle. You can see that even though we took the same cube, the direction that we took the slice of really makes a difference in the cross section. But if you can answer questions like this, then you're really visualizing the three dimensions the way you need to. So last example here is a cylinder. If we take a cylinder and we slice it parallel to that base, what is our figure that we get in this case? Well, it's going to hit when we open it up, a lot like the carrot actually, we're going to see a circle. Here's a think about it question for you before we end this video. If you were to take this same cylinder and rather than slice through it this direction horizontally, what if you were to slice it vertically? What kind of figure would you get if you sliced it vertically? So that's coming down through the top. If you say rectangle, you're exactly right. So give the try these a, a shot. We'll talk more about this as the unit progresses.